Hi everyone, just an update on my progress with Dead Man's Hand. It's coming along nicely. I've now finished a group of uh, lawmen. These are actually uh, from Great Escape Games, so they're boxed um, and, and uh, designed to be played with the rules. Um, all the other figures I've uh, painted up so far have just been generic uh, Western figures from various ranges. Um, but these, these, as I say, from Great Escape Games, um, nice figures. They're tall and slender, so they're um, larger than the, the figures I've painted so far. I mean, they strike me as being an equivalent size to Redoubt's figures, if that gives you um, an impression of, of their size. Um, so, um, in a way, they're, they're a lot, they're a lot um, taller than the other figures I'm going to be playing with. And it, if, if I were basing them on multiple bases, then I'd, I would personally, I would have a problem with that. But because it's a skirmish game, um, it doesn't worry me so much and um, in fact it's quite nice to have taller figures for the lawmen because it makes them a little bit more imposing and authoritative looking and um, I've been uh, constructing a few other bits and pieces I, I showed you the uh, livery stable the other day but I've also acquired um, the corral fencing now, because you've got to have a corral to have a gunfight in, haven't you? So I, I, I bought a whole uh, assortment of uh, the smaller packs from foreground. So corral fencing, the livestock fencing, hitching posts and sign uh, sign posts, notice boards, um, outside toilets, the Thunderbox toilets. So I'll, I'll show you all those in a moment. Um, but this is the group of seven figures that I've completed. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with them. They, um, I did find that, that they've got a lot of detail on them, and but not really being familiar with the dress and fashion styles of the time, um, it's sometimes hard to make out what the detail is meant to represent. For instance, this figure here, um, He's been painted up on the um, the artwork that comes with the box as, as having a sort of cravat type, you know, uh, tie around his neck. But if you look at it, you know, closely, it could almost be that he's wearing a sort of dicky bow tie. Um, and I wasn't quite sure, what, you know, it's been in the end, I just painted it as a sort of uh, cravat style. And there are other things like um, various studs and buttons and pins and things. Um, and because there's a little bit of um, excess metal on some of them, um, it's often hard to tell the difference between what is meant to be there, what the detail that's meant to be there, and what is actually meant to be cleaned off with a knife. Um, but that's a sort of minor complaint. I think they're very nice. They're very nice figures. I like the poses. Um, they've got a lot of character in them. Um, you know, they're they're, they're 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 nice figures. I'm not I'm not going to complain about them. Just I just had a few problems with distinguishing what things were meant to be. That's all. Um, right. So what I'm going to do, I think, is. Chain, I've been practicing trying to focus and I, this is the best focus I can get on these figures so I wanted to show them to you individually so I'm going to reposition the camera and get a sort of uh, close-up of, of each one in turn. Right first up then is this uh, very kind of uh, elegantly dressed chap. Um, he's actually this is this is one of the cases in point about trying to work out what the detail is, he's actually holding in his hand either a cigar or a cigarette, but he's holding it in a very odd way. Um, so the only thing that I thought 
it looked like was that he's about to sort of flick it away. It's not, it's not, he's not holding it in a way where he'd easily be able to put the, put it into his mouth. So he's not actually smoking it. I think he's, he, he's actually been posed as he's just taken it out of his mouth and he's about to f flick it on the ground and go for his guns. So it's, it's quite a nice pose, but uh, I very nearly cut the cigarette off in the, at the beginning, thinking it was a bit of excess metal. Um, so I've painted him up fairly simply, just with mainly sort of uh, dark clothes, but with a waistcoat that's got a sort of very eye-catching kind of front to it. Okay, so that's him. Okay, next up is uh, another lawman wearing a a waistcoat but he's he's less uh, carefully dressed now he's got hasn't got to well he's got his shirt sleeves rolled up and uh, he's got longer longer hair so he's not uh, quite as careful about his appearance as the previous guy but uh, uh, it's a nice pose um, A little bit more kind of dynamic pose than the other guy. So that's him. Another lawman in a suit with a, a waistcoat, which is the only bit of colour I've um, I've attempted on him. Uh, Again, he's just sort of ready for a fight rather than in a fight. Um, maybe he's firing a shot in the, into the air to get the crowd's attention. So this chap is is wearing kind of, um, I suppose you could describe it as more dowdy kind of uh, clothing, still um smart still got a waistcoat and so on um but he's got this sort of long-tailed coat which is a bit odd um i tried a kind of checker sort of pattern on on that um but not making it too garish or anything just to give an impression of a kind of pattern in the in the thread as it were um, so I've sort of deliberately used um, duller kind of colours, even though a lot of the others had black. You know, this is more kind of murky sort of colours, browns and sort of greenish colours. And here's the one that, uh, as I say, he could well be wearing a bow tie. Um, but I found it a bit difficult to work out what was going on around his neck, so I just painted him up like that. And you don't really notice from from a distance. So that's him. And this chap is probably my favourite figure out of the seven. I um, don't know why. I just I think I think he's got a little bit more. Um, more character than the others. He reminds me a little bit of the, uh, if you've ever seen the film Appaloosa, he reminds me a bit of the lawman that uh, Viggo Mortensen plays in, in that film. Um, so again, sort of smartly dressed, but not over the top kind of sartorial elegance. He's armed with a double barreled shotgun, uh, but he's still got He's sort of got got his trousers tucked into his riding boots, but he's still got a waistcoat um, and a fairly sort of plain, plain coat rather than a suit. So yeah, I like I like that one. And this character is okay, but he's probably my least favourite out of the seven. Uh, it's, it's probably because you can't actually see his face too well because it's it's hidden by the brim of the hat and the 
um, the rifle that he's got up against his face that he's firing. So that tends to take away, if you can't see the face, it tends to take away a little bit of the char character from the figure. But uh, obviously, you know, either about to fire or aiming. Uh, so perfectly reasonable figure. It's just, uh, I think the cost of the figures are all so nice is, is you know, one of them's got to be um, the less, the least attractive to me, I suppose. And then finally, you've got this uh, guy who's uh, a lot more rough and ready in a way. He's, he's uh, doesn't take a great deal of care with his personal appearance. He's got very long hair and shaggy, shaggy beard, and he's wearing uh, a duster to, um, you know, protect him from the ardours of a long, long drive or long. Uh, long ride out to capture the outlaws. So here's the real, he, he means he means business rather than um, prancing about town swankily dressed. But again, I, I like this figure, I like this one. Right, so that's all the figures. So I'll, I'll just take you on a little tour of uh, the other parts of uh, the town and the and the um, things that I've acquired, so I may well do this just as a sort of uh, handheld approach with the camera. Okay, so we're still outside the sheriff's office, but uh, I wanted to show you. I, I built one set. I built was um, sign posts and hitching posts and that kind of thing. So. I've actually used the signpost now rather than my original intention of uh, uh, just using a bit of the excess MDF from one of the buildings to put these wanted notices on. And this one I've given a, a notice board all to itself because this is for a Merrick um, Yankee Wargamer. He, he actually sent me a shot of himself all uh, tooled up with authentic uh, weaponry of the period. Um, I think it's a Winchester rifle and I don't know what kind of pistol it is, some kind of cult pistol but he look, and he's got all his uh, hat and cravat and gear on so I've given him a, a wanted poster on his own there and then um, up the other end of the, there's another notice board here, um, this has got uh, Darkling of Eldridge's mugshot Art Aldridge, the villain Art Aldridge, it's got me, um, it's got another one of Eric and uh, Pete from Mini Warzone who I've uh, described as Perdition Pete and um, he's wanted for cattle rustling. Um, then you can see you've seen all these buildings before but these are the hitching posts so I've dotted a few of those around. I've actually got more than I need. Um, the the set also comes with literally signposts, but I, I'm not quite sure what to make of them, what to do with them. Um, I haven't got anything written on them at the moment. Um, may not actually get around to using them, but uh, they, they're there and they come with a set. So I thought I might as well glue them together. Um, around the back of the high street, I've now got some um, pens for livestock to keep pigs in maybe or chickens or something there's I've got four of these um, Thunderbox toilets these these are brilliant actually they're very detailed um, you have to glue the door in place the, glue, the door doesn't hinge but um, you can position the door however you want um, but inside they've actually got you know the full works inside the, the actual kind of loo and so on with a seat that you can either have up or down. Um, so it might be a good hiding place for one of the figures or a spot to get ambushed when you least expect it. Um, then up the other end of the town, this is all the corral fencing that I got to go with the 
livery stable. Um, so there's quite a lot of that, but I wanted to um, I wanted to have it outside the livery stable. Some of my trademark horse poo there, um, just to give it a a more realistic look. You've seen all these figures already. These are the War Games Foundry and Artisan Design. I put them in there having a shootout in the corral. Uh, this is the, the livery stable that I showed you the other day. So um, that's progress I've made. I've now started work on another building. Um, and once I've done that, then I think I'm going to acquire a a few more at least and this isn't how I'm gonna have I mean it's a you know the, it's only a kind of mat that I've put down so I can place the buildings however I want they're not going to be permanently in this position but this is just how they're ending up at the moment um, so getting there getting there quite pleased with it all um, yeah that's it so thanks very much for watching everyone and uh, see you on the next video bye for now